everyone, and thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I am joined by Costa, the CEO and co-founder of Broker Bay. We are chatting about his entrepreneurial journey, the challenges that have come along with it, how he has overcome failures, and persevered throughout his entire journey. We also touch on the yoga side of things. All right, so today I am so excited to be joined by Costa Dukas, who is the CEO and co-founder of Broker Bay, which is pretty much an absolute lifesaver in the real estate world. It's a command shop. It is a one-stop shop for us that makes our lives so much easier. Side note, we also found out that you are a yoga enthusiast, so very excited to um, chat with you and uh, get to know a little bit more about you and what it is that you do and how you sort of came about being the co-founder of Broker Bay. Yeah, thanks for for having me, Chantel. So um, although I don't do as much yoga anymore, um, I I still do it every week, but uh, yeah, I used to be a huge, huge enthusiast. So um, so yeah, um, should I just tell you about uh, how I started the company or? Yeah, I'd love to know what uh, what sort of sparked. Um, I remember from the last time that we chatted, were you a realtor previously, or? I've. I, it's funny because I've always um, I've been a realtor since 18 years old, and yeah. um, that has always been um, the backdrop to so many uh, failed entrepreneurial ventures that I've uh, that I've done throughout my life. So throughout um, from 18 to now, I've always been a realtor and kind of doing. Um, small businesses, anything from like, I used to have a, many people don't know this. I used to have um, a go-go dancing company in Toronto. I used to have like, really? yeah, I was, I, I used to do lots in the um, entertainment industry with go-go dancers and, and entertainers. Um, I had a marketing business at one point, but um, the backdrop to all of that was I wouldn't be able to support myself if I didn't have um, um, the flexibility and the steady stream of, uh, of income from, from being a realtor throughout that entire time. For sure. What was, so you said you've had a few failures, like what was, what sort of kept you going and what kept pushing you forward and kept you going with everything? Yeah. So I've, um, I, I've done at least eight or nine businesses from, from a very young age to now. And, um, it's, uh, I, I find it when I, when I have an idea and, um, it's just sitting with me, I, I, I can't help, but try to go for it and do it. And, um, and so, some of those ideas, um, take, you fail very quickly. Some of them took a lot longer. There was, um, I, I remember one of my projects was I was um, building my own yoga mat. So I was actually like uh, meeting with manufacturers, um, speaking with producers in China and, and industrial designers. And uh, yeah, some ideas when they fail, they're much more expensive than others. And that was uh, that was one of the big ones that, um, that took about two and a half years out of my life and, uh, and a lot of money. But, um, but yeah, it's just uh, when an idea kind of settles into my mind, it's I have to, I have to give it a shot love that love it that's always uh it's great to have that mentality and to be able to take the risk and sort of trust yourself and just go with it and try it out yeah so obviously broker bay has been a huge success um how did that come about yeah yay (laughs) thank god thank god (laughs) i couldn't deal with any more failure i'll tell you that um broker bay was an absolute fluke um really like and it's so it's so interesting because when I when I look at like when you hear that like typical startup story the um, the theme is like you have to grind and like really push your limits to take it but I will tell you that um, Broker Bay was the exact opposite experience from every other business I ever had and I've I've ever started it it has flowed and the success has flowed from day one and the serendipities that have occurred I'm I'm still like in complete awe so. Um, the way Broker Bay started was I put an ad on Craigslist for a roommate. And um, I was, I was like, I was quite young. I was living, um, I was living downtown and, and one of my, my friend's parents had a, had a building there and we were, I was living up top and my friend had moved out and I, I needed to look for a new roommate. And I put an ad on Craigslist and um, I met my current co-founder who uh, by chance happens to be the mo- one of the most talented computer engineers and scientists that I've, I've ever had the, um, had the privilege of, of meeting and working with, but um, the whole timeline from that point to now has just been littered with like equally as random and like serendipitous moments that have just like made it very not to say simple. We've obviously worked tremendously hard to get here, but, um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a very lucky and serendipitous ride to where we've come today. And 
And it just so happens that from all the failures I had in the past, I, I now had that toolkit and the experience in real estate and the right people um, with me to, to kind of make, make this one a success. That's absolutely amazing. I love that you've been able to sort of carry through all your past experiences and use them for this too. Yeah. Like there were points in my life where I had to learn graphic design very intimately. And like, so I, I all the things from graphic design or product design, um, they all came, um, came to help me quite a bit with this, with this latest business. That is really cool. So I guess you from where did you see whenever you initially started Broker Bay, what did you envision it? Did you have like a 10 year vision for the company and what it was going to be or? No. So um, I, I was a I was a broker I, at that point in my life. I was uh, very committed to selling real estate. I was um, I, I wasn't really working on any projects when this uh, when my co-founder, his name's Pavel, moved in, moved in with me. And um, yeah, just like. It started off as noticing issues that my brokerage was having and noticing small issues that I was having and then just kind of brainstorming with my partner. So the so we, we were just talking one night, we were having beers, I think it was like a Friday night. And um, th the simplest decision that we made was kind of the catalyst for all this. We said we were gonna buy a, um, it was like a, a five foot by four foot whiteboard and just put it on our living room. So we just had this huge, we had this huge whiteboard in the middle of our living room. And, um, and as I would experience problems or, or we'd have like little, little ideas as to how we could create efficiencies for my business or, or, um, or my brokerage's business, we just write it down on the whiteboard. And so now imagine you have two people who are fairly entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial by nature now having this like huge whiteboard staring at them every day with like little things that like you could make better in your own business. And, um, and so we started basically just spending the weekends um, making the most rudimentary like website um, to start solving the most basic of problems. Like when I tell you, um, when I, like, it, it barely produced any value at day one, but it was like the start of now just continuously adding incremental value to the system, which has now grown to be um, uh, Broker Bay. That is absolutely amazing. I love that story. Um, it, well, it was even whenever we had our call, whenever you were explaining everything that you guys were doing and you're just like, well, we are state of the art technology right now. We're built in brand new with brand new technology. So anything that comes up as an issue, you're able to solve the problem for it. And uh, that was one thing that really sort of stuck with me. So it's nice to hear that that's sort of the basis and how this was all created. Um, where, so you've now partnered how many brokerages do you have across Canada? Are you venturing into the States? Where are you guys going with everything? Yeah, so um, in terms of, of what has happened over the last, um, I'd say three, three years. So at first it was just me um, going door to door, uh, begging brokerages. I'm, I'm sure if any, any of the brokerages in Barrie that I begged early on see this, they'll, they'll laugh. Um, but I just would beg broker owners and like, I remember one meeting I shed a tear to this one brokerage, just like it was the final, like we were going to end the business at this point. And I, I, I basically, I like, I'm like, you have to sign up. You got to trust me on this. And that's kind of where this started. Um, we started getting some more momentum and we started getting inbound inquiries. And then, um, yeah, fast forward from some begging to some momentum come to now, we, we've now grown to, um, to 80,000 um, agents and um, we're, we're, we're completely bootstrapped and, um, We've now started doing our first um, association and MLSY deals, uh, BDAR uh, being one of them, which we're so grateful for. So yeah, we've, um, we've started to sign um, associations. We're entering bigger conversations and I'm super excited uh, to say that um, about an hour ago, we signed our first MLS in the US. So we, um, we, did, our, we did our first MLS. I can't say who they are yet. They're, they're fairly large. Uh, but we did sign our first um, our first MLS in the, in the United States of America. So we're really, really excited about that. That's incredible. No, we are so excited to be partnered with you and to be able to offer this as one of our member benefits. Um, I know it constantly comes up in conversation with local realtors here and even realtors that we speak to across the province, just how much of a solution you've been to so many of the issues, whether it's booking, showing, sending out offer presentation, um, info, just tracking what's going on. So it's, it's definitely, it's been a huge um, help for our business. So thank you for sticking with it. And hey, the thank you. The thank you goes both ways. We're really excited to be partnering with you guys. That's 
awesome. So whenever you, like from the entrepreneurial side of things, like whenever you have sort of some downtime, what is it that you're doing? Or are you always constantly go, 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 go with everything? So it, it um, there's ebbs and flows. Like when, when the opportunities come and when the ideas come, um, we're, we're working like seven days a week, uh, my partner and I. Uh, but then there's always um, moments in time where, you know what, it's the summer and brokers and boards don't want to talk to us and like, or it's Christmas time. And, and um, so, so everything does come in waves and, um, and yeah, um, I, I would say at this point though, we are, we are working, uh, we are working seven days a week, my partner and I on, on the business. So it's, uh, but it's like, it's not a chore. It's extremely and maybe overly stimulating at this point, the amount of ideas, the amount of momentum. And um, it's really, uh, it's really, it feels natural to be working um, at this, at this like capacity at, at this moment in time until things change. And we need to take a break before I lose more hair. That's absolutely, no, I love to hear that. Um, so future plans, like where is this going? What's the, uh, what's the big picture with everything or? Yeah, so um, our our plans are bigger than our business at this point, and the amount of people we have to execute them. So we we do have to always um, uh, pick and choose what is um, what is going to help us and our clients uh, the most in the long run. And um, and yeah, so we've been we've been first and foremost presented with this enormous opportunity in the U.S. Um, we 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 do feel we're going to capture about twenty five percent to thirty percent of the market in the next six to seven months. Yeah, there's been some big changes in the U.S. Yeah, so we're, well, I won't get too deep into that because I, I can't talk about much with regards to who we're speaking to. Um, but the goal is we're going to become hopefully a market leader in the U.S. In, in very short order. And with all of that increase in activity and revenue, um, we want to hire tons of people, um, the majority being uh, more computer engineers, more computer scientists um, to aggressively build out um, this really like horizontal ecosystem that we've always dreamed of. Right now, people, um, when they think of Broker Bay, they're like, oh yeah, I love Broker Bay because it does my appointments. And I love that we do your appointments and we are always gonna do your appointments better than any company in the world. Um, but we now need to um, kind of show the community that we do more than just appointments. We wanna be um, the central place where the entire transaction is managed um, for a brokerage, for an agent. Um, and we wanna do all of those vertical processes like document management, like X, Y, and Z, uh, better than um, the current companies that are in the marketplace. That's amazing. And it, there's so many times that I sit there and I'm using all these different services to try and do everything. So to really have just that one-stop shop would be absolutely phenomenal. So I look yeah. forward to everything that you guys have coming down the pipeline with this. Yeah, and it's, it's not that we're trying to be the jack of all trades because we understand that like once you start spreading yourself thin that um, we can't do everything better than everyone. But there are certain, I think, um, foundational pillars of processes within a brokerage and within an agent's um, purview that we that we feel we can do better um, than any other company. And then for things that we don't think we can do better, we want to create seamless integrations. Um, a lot of companies say they have integrations with uh, third parties on their websites and whatnot, but in practice, most integrations are very clunky, we have found um, in our industry. So um, we want to improve the state of third party integrations and, um, and we do want to um, natively and internally develop these fundamental processes um, like document management and, and, and stuff uh, within our company. That's amazing. That's I'm, I'm so excited to see everything that's going to come with this. It's no, it's been, yes. Yeah. So are we. <laughs> um, so if you, can we go into the yoga side and sort of how you got into that? Yeah. That, that attracted you to, or what started your journey? Or yeah, so um, in the last two years, I had to cut my hair and present myself like a business person. But um, at my core, I'm a huge, huge hippie. <laughs> I've I, I've always been. And um, and yeah, what got me into yoga? Well, I'll just tell you the story. Um, <laughs> had no intention of getting into yoga. I was maybe about eighteen or nineteen years old, and my um, my girlfriend's father at the time invited me to a yoga class in like a basement at, at a uft like building of some sort and yeah. um so that was kind of my first introduction and then like didn't think about it then i started like 
seeing it at the gyms that I was going to. And then finally, you, I think this is the case with most people that are like trying to figure out what's important to them in life. Um, you meet this one teacher, and I think this is the story for, for, for most people. You meet this one teacher, and then you're completely blown away and inspired um, by this one person. And then you realize, oh, wait, this, there's more to this than just stretching. And then you start to get introduced to the concepts of like uh, meditation or movement as meditation. And um, so I went, I went down this rabbit hole of just like getting more and more interested in these concepts that I'd never heard of. And uh, so I, I then decided to, um, to, to go get a, a teacher training um, uh, certificate and, and become a teacher in, in Toronto, which then led me to, uh, to go to going and studying in India for, for several months with, um, with um, I, the, the type of yoga that I, I used to do at least is called uh, Ashtanga yoga. And I, I went and studied with this gentleman, uh, Ralph Najakot in, um, in India for a bit. And um, yeah, it's, um, it's become like one of the greatest tools that I have in my life to, um, to find balance and, uh, and yeah, and just to feel good. That's awesome. That's very similar to what I sort of have done, not going the full extent of getting the teaching and yeah. going around, which would be absolutely amazing to do, but started originally just for, um, pure fitness, the physical side of it, and then sort of discovered the whole spiritual side and yeah. started down that road and then that's exactly as soon as you start sort of incorporating the breathing the meditation all the chakras like everything there it's just yeah it's sort yeah. of it's a good way to start the day or end the day and just that quiet peace of mind especially with the types of lives that we live and the busyness that we have so yeah and, and I think aside from like doing yoga in like the isolation of that two-hour window as a practice like I think over time I like it starts to bleed into other um, areas of your life and you start to um, explore other things as well that, that that leads to. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a great tool to have on, on the journey of life. I, I always uh, encourage everybody to, uh, to learn more about um, yoga or meditation and, uh, and, and what it means for them. That's the other thing that's really cool about it too, I find is it's such a personal journey. Um, and it's really go with the flow, enjoy whatever it is that it means to you and, um, whatever you have going on, like it's such a personal experience and it really allows you to get in tune with yourself and figure out what's important. And yeah. Yeah. Like when you, when you start looking at like, what is, what does it mean to be alive and what do you have to work with while being alive? Like you have this one thing it's your body. Like you have not, you really have nothing else other than your body and, and, and your mind. And, um, it's a tool to like allow you to experience and help your body throughout the, the one life that you have. And, and you can use it both internally and for external stretching and, and for release of emotion and all this stuff. And it's just like, it's a, it's a really full practice, but at the same time, I also, um, I took it too seriously at one point. So yeah. I, it became like, um, like a very, at one point in my life, it became a very dogmatic and regimented like practice. And the type of yoga that I was doing um, was very regimented um, and militant to the point where people are getting injuries and they don't talk about it. And like, it was, wow. uh, it was strange in that way. So um, yeah, I think just also taking it with some lightheartedness as well, not making like, you meet a lot of people that are like, I'm all about yoga. This is all I care about. And like, yeah, just, it's a tool for you to include in your life and um, yeah, whatever that means to you. That's really cool. Have you ever done any retreats or I guess India would have been one of those situations? Yeah. yeah so I, I've done a few retreats. Um, one of my favorite retreats that I've ever done um, is uh, was actually a meditation retreat. Uh, have you heard of uh, Vipassana? Yeah. So it's um, it was like at the beginning of, of my entry into yoga and whatnot. And maybe I think I was a bit underprepared for this retreat, but it was um, a 10 day silent meditation retreat. Um, I'm like the road from my house actually then. yeah it's it's not far that's the one I went to so it's not yeah. far from you at all Be I highly recommend it it's impossible to get in anymore you have to like book it a year and a half in advance um mm -hmm. I, I actually am I'm booking it for next September I think I'm I'm scheduled to go but uh that was one of the most challenging and most rewarding um uh, retreats I've ever been on and um yeah, like you you leave you leave a silent meditation retreat um feeling like a like a monk and then that obviously starts to dissipate after like 
a few days or weeks. And, but like, there has been a little bit that, I, that I've, um, I learned from that retreat that has never left me. And it's uh, again, like I can now include that what I, what I learned in that retreat to my yoga practice and in my life. And so, yeah, I think, I think, uh, Vipassana is one of the most amazing retreats someone can do. It's, it's very challenging, but it's, um, it's very rewarding at the same time. No, I definitely, it's, it seems like it's just that next step in the journey and sort of going along and sitting alone with yourself and your thoughts and figuring out what's going on. <laughs> if, you, if you think about it, like your entire life, your entire life, you've, you've been communicating in some way. So from the day you're born, you're crying, you're talking, you're, so imagine for the first time ever, you can't communicate. And the only, the only person you're left with is yourself for 10 days. It's like, there's all these people around you, but you're only communicating with yourself. And I think in, in that environment, all of what's actually in your mind begins to surface and you can actually do a real inventory and evaluation of like, hey, yeah. oh crap, I'm, uh, I'm thinking a lot. This is, uh, these aren't good thoughts. Like, and, then, and then they teach you the tools to process them and to, and to dive deeper into them and to, and to, yeah, just be a witness of them. That's really cool. And I love that you're able to sort of integrate all of that into your business and really living sort of that whole lifestyle. So, Well, you know what I'll tell you? This is what I'll say. Of the most, um, of all the people I know that are, that get into yoga or get into meditation, they do so not because they're zen out and chilled out. They do so because they're, they're like, they're really stressed out and they're looking for answers. Like most people that find like religion or spirituality that I've met are usually the people with the most problems. Obviously we all have the most problems, but some people reach those points sooner than others. Um, so yeah, so it's like, yes, I, um, I can apply those, um, those tools to, in my life and in my business, but um, they, have, they have initially come from a place of like utter turmoil and like lack of purpose. So it's like, um, so yeah. Uh, I'm still a very, very, very stressed out person. And many people think I'm not, but uh, yeah, like all the, the whole gamut, trouble sleeping. Um, like, so it's, I'm still using these tools to get better at all these things, but um, yeah, I got just as many problems as I used to. So just being honest. No, I, I appreciate the transparency and the honesty. And I know that there's probably so many other people out there. I know realtors, we're all working in a very high stress business. Yeah. Uh, and just even anybody else that's listening to this, like there's so much value that you've just brought to the table with everything that you've said. So thank you very much for being so open and honest with it. Oh, my pleasure. Um, okay. I have some rapid fire questions for you that I like to do. So don't overthink it, whatever your first answer is. <laughs> Okay, if you can travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, what's that best I like? Patagonia. I want to go to Patagonia. I think it's in where is that Chile? Yeah. No, I, I hope I didn't screw that up. But I've always seen that. I always see pictures. I really want to go there. Um, and favorite food. Favorite food is um, fire grilled um, prawns, like big shrimp but i like them smoky with like a little char oh sounds delicious yes uh, and do you read books i do okay what is your top book um we'll go from a are you more like business side uh, the only books i read are um are are spiritual books <laughs> basically and my uh the, a book that I'm about to start right now, um, which I haven't started, but I, I, I've, been, I've heard it from like four different people. It's called um, The Four Agreements by Ron uh, Luis, Mag I think it's Ron Miguel or, or Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe his name is. And it's uh, it's based on Toltec wisdom of um, kind of like there are like a, a people in time around the time of the Aztecs and they have uh, lots of uh, their own philosophies. Interesting, I haven't read that one yet. Um, Awareness by Paul DeMillo. No, I've not. It. Yeah, it Awareness by Paul DeMillo. I like it. Um, okay, and last question. Um, sort of the signature question that I usually always ask is, what does being more than a realtor mean to you? 
It's a very, that's a very loaded question. Cause I feel like realtors aren't even realtors. Realtors are therapists. They're, um, they're like, oh my God, what does it mean to be more than a realtor? Just be yourself to be more than a realtor is to be human and be yourself and let that bleed into uh, your, your, your communications with your clients and, and everyone around you. Um, to be more than a realtor is not to get caught up in your realtor persona, which many people, I'll tell you one thing. The nice. thing that I find about all realtors is that they're, they're basically always competing against each other and they have to build this persona um, in the market as to why they're different than the other person who in all intent and purpose does the same job. And I just want to say to all those realtors who feel like that to be more than a, re a realtor is just be yourself. And that's all people want to see. They don't want to see you are not your marketing. You are not your, your last sale. You are yourself and you will align with everybody around you that, that loves who you are. So yeah, just be yourself guys. Love it. That was <laughs> well said. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. That was, it's been absolutely wonderful getting to know you and learning a little bit more about Broker Bay, everything that you've done, your journey so far. And man, there's lots of nuggets of wisdom in this one for anyone that's listening. <laughs> I hope I don't uh, offend anyone. And uh, Chantal, thank you for, uh, for having me today. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to all the other episodes that we've recorded. We've got some exciting guests coming down the pipeline that we are looking forward to sharing with you.